Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Therapy Podcast. Today we are shaking things up. I'm Daniela Santos, I'm the Marketing Operations Specialist at X-Ray and I am your host for this special episode. And why, you may ask? Because today we are turning the tables and interviewing the one and only QA therapist Cristiano Cunha. Cristiano is one of our solution architects and testing advocates and he is usually the one asking the questions but today it's his turn in the hot seat. We are super excited to dive into your journey, Cristiano, and also to hear more about your insights on the software industry. To get things started, how would you briefly describe yourself? I'm not sure if I'm going to do it briefly because, well, I'm not young anymore, but um, <laughs> I'm going to do as short as possible. But I believe that as most of us testers, uh, I started as a developer way, way back, like 20 years ago, and I started developing uh, mobile applications. But it was a short term that I was a developer for mobile and then I shifted for e-commerce sites. Well, that journey started a uh, while ago and then an opportunity uh, as a presented itself to me because, as you know, in the past, we didn't have any testers or quality um, validations uh, whatsoever. But we started to listen to, well, we need more of that. We need to have some testers. And we, in the company where I was at, uh, we started to wanting that. And we started to create a test team on the side, you know, those old siloed uh, test teams that needed to validate at the end of the cycle. And um, I was asked, well, do you want to to be part of that uh, test team? And I, actually, I was a little bit reluctant because in the past, you know, the testers were, I don't know, failed developers or guys that didn't know much. <laughs> But um, the opportunity was, you're going to be testing mostly manual testing, but you will have opportunity to do automation because I love automation in all of these different forms that exist. And after that, after I tasted the job, the testing area, I just never uh, leave. So I started in investing more in that, investing more in test automation and understanding quality as a whole. And I believe that... Um, Nowadays, testing is more than just tests. It has bigger reach uh, if you want to have quality in your, in your delivery. Well, not brief, but uh, yeah, in a nutshell, it's, it's much like this. <laughs> When looking back at your journey, was there something in special that sparked your interest in the industry or it was something that happened in a very natural way? I think a little bit of both. I've always been curious. I always liked to understand how things are working and asking questions. So how is this work? Why are we doing this? And all of these questions are really the trademarks of, of a tester, let's say. Um, and, and that's come naturally for me and like the attention to details or why is this color not the same or why is this pixel a little bit off? All of those things came naturally. Uh, so I believe it, um, I kind of match the, the tester, um, what, what we say the tester mindset, but it's not a mindset. It's like being curious, having the interest on understanding how everything works and um, also start listening to stories in the past. Well, the community was not that big, was not, we, we didn't share that much, but big companies uh, have a lot of stories of transformations into quality, of transformations into DevOps at that time already. And it was really, really, I always loved to go to conferences, listen to, how Facebook did it, how Netflix did it. And all of those things are really inspirational and wanted us, or at least for me, to do more. Uh, and, and that those were the two things that started to sparkle my interest more and more into quality. Looking back at your vast experience, is there any project that you'd like to share with us that at the end of the day makes you feel and say, I'm so proud that I made this? Oh yeah, I have one that um, that I really loved, and I I always started uh, describing this experience as well. It was one of my um, most enjoyable projects that I have, the, where I was the most happy. <laughs> let's say it was in w one of the past uh, companies where I was, where I was invited to um, come and start a central automation team, a test automation team. 
And at that time, um, that company has testers, but mostly manual testers. And it has a lot of development teams. And when I say a lot, like more than 20 teams uh, producing network of microservices. And they needed to invest in automation because otherwise the testing will take too much time. So I got in. I, I was lucky enough to be able to choose the elements of my team. So I started into viewing and choosing who uh, will be part of my team. And I built an automation team. I built a testing framework that was used by many developer teams. And I start working with um, other operations and infrastructure teams in order to shape what was the pipeline at that time. So we started building also the pipeline at the same time as we were building the testing framework. So I learned a lot, a lot of challenges, but it was one of the happiest times of my, my life because, well, it touches everything. Uh, everything touches in automation. The pipeline is automation. Test automation is automation. Uh, so I was really deeply invested. And it's uh, one of the roles when you are a central team that touches a lot of teams. So you try to solve a lot of issues, a lot of challenges that the team has uh, with a central product that is used by everyone. So it's a big challenge, but a, with big rewards also. So that was one of the most happiest times in my, in my career. <laughs> You said yourself that you are a fan of automation, and I also wanted to understand with you what's your take on the current state of testing industry and also software testing, and how do you think that automation is shaping the world of testing? Yeah, I think um, automation is something that you cannot ignore if you are talking with um, talking in big companies with fast deliveries. It's something that you need to invest on, not only test automation, but automation as a whole. Um, I was part of the changing uh, towards DevOps and towards infrastructure engineering. And, and for that, you need automation. Automation to the deployment, automation of um, testing, automation of observability, all of the tools that you need in order to deliver faster, you'll need to have automation within it. And also to remove yourself from those tedious manual tasks that take a lot of time. Uh, automation will take that away from you. So it do it faster, it will do it more reliably. Um, and I believe automation wasn't one of the biggest change that we have, uh, not only in testing, but everywhere. And it will continue to be. But I believe that it will shape into a new form, let's say, because the biggest tendency that we hear nowadays, it's, it's AI. So what? Uh, artificial intelligence um, and, and big data will shape, I believe, the future. How? Uh, it's still an, uh, an incognita. A lot of paths are open, uh, but we don't have yet anything that is really, really usable. But I believe that uh, one sentence that I hear um, a while ago was, well, AI will not take your jobs, but someone using AI will take your jobs. So I believe that any field nowadays need to look at AI and need to look at him on how will it bring and how will it change your field in order for you to adopt the, those kind of, um, I believe there will be a lot of um, assistance, not replacing what you do, but to assist you in better ways of doing things giving you more ideas. Well, in the, for instance, I was thinking the other day, how can we apply AI to testing? And testing has a lot of different ways to do. One of the easiest things to think is, well, it will produce the automated tests for you. But they have a lot of other things that you can use AI for. You can use them to interact and have more ideas about what I want to test. Asking him, well, I'm going to test this application. Uh, that needs to have this compliance, these risks, what are the tests that you suggest me to do? And it will start giving you ideas. Of course, you, I don't believe it's in the state that you can use everything directly that it outputs, but it's someone, it's like having a conversation in the coffee with another colleague, you know? You ask him, he give you ideas, you say, well, this does not make sense, that you mind uh, changing this a little bit or... Uh, adding this and this conversation, this interaction between him and, her and us 
will give you more ideas and will sparkle more more information. So I believe that AI will shape uh, the future, not probably replacing like everyone is is saying, but being a powerful assistant. And if you're not using it, yeah, you'll be in trouble. Yes, and you know that sentence that you shared, you hear that everywhere, saying that someone using AI will definitely replace you. Yeah. So I think that's a good mindset for us to take into consideration even outside software testing, because it's applicable to all industries. Oh, yeah. You need to keep learning. Sometimes I heard testers say, well, that process or that way of doing things that does not work for me. But it will not hurt for you to know how those new processes are done, because most of the times in my career, I do not adopt 100% of one process that I hear about. What I do is with the amount of learning or the amount of knowledge that I have, I will pick, well, this will work for us or this will work for us. And we build something that is something that will answer the challenges that the company where you are uh, needs to be solved. Because sometimes just a apply all of the agile principles into one team, one company will not work and it will be worse than, than good. But if you start adopting, well, this part from agile, this part from here, this part from here, and make your own process towards a good delivery with the objective and goals of that company, it will be much, much more helpful than just adopting something because it's cool or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and testers were the quality uh, gatekeepers in the past, but they are not anymore. So we need to have the entire company, the entire team uh, looking out uh, after quality and quality are not just testing anymore. There are a lot of other areas that you need to be careful about in order to increase the quality that your delivery will have. It's like you said, quality is a mindset and it's applicable within all the teams that are working with you. So I think that's a matter of mindsets in many ways and scenarios. Now I want to know more about who is Christian outside X-Ray, learn more about your hobbies and also your passion projects that happen outside of your work. Do you have anything that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I'm stopped laughing because I'm a man of many passions. <laughs> I like to experiment a lot, uh, but one of my biggest things as well, I love sports and I continue to do so. And one big part of my, my day is dedicated to sports. Uh, I love the sea also. So I do a little bit of kite surfing when I have time. Uh, before having kids, I, I did a lot more. Now, it, not so much. Uh, but I continue to do like CrossFit or running, uh, two of my things that I do uh, on daily basis. And that's, this is more the physical part of me, just because I'm sitting all of the all the all day long. But um, I love 3D printing and I love cosplaying. And um, the la latest passion is home automation because well, automation is part of of my life. Automation. I was looking for that answer. <laughs> But, but everything, you know, automation is something, it's um, a little bug that installs within you. And I'm always thinking, how can I automate this? Even when I dismantle something at home, I will start thinking, well, how can I use this to do something else to automate something? And yeah, it's something that is always, always with you uh, on, on this, this stage of, of life. That's me in a nutshell. So Yeah, I can imagine yourself at home thinking, how can I do this even better or faster? <laughs> Sometimes it takes longer to automate than do it manually. But once it's done, it's a, a, a feeling of fulfillment. That is, <laughs> It's a feeling of like, yes, I made it. I'm so proud of myself and I, I was able to finish it. Yeah, yeah, that's more like it. And that you just sit back. Like my latest thing is I have um, automatic um, shutters. So they close the windows automatically. Uh, well, they, they were not automatic. You need to press a button every day. And I install a little thing that um, synchronizes with um, uh, an application through Bluetooth. And I just scheduled uh, the morning and the evening. And now my house magically opens <laughs> and then closes uh, at a certain time. Well, I already have the 2.0 uh, uh, version uh, schedule in my head that I need sensors because I already noticed that the winter time uh, the sun is a little bit late or sooner down, so I have the shutters uh, open for much more time in in, in summer. 
So we ha if I have a, a, a light detector, it will adjust a little bit. Now let's dig in about the future that you see for yourself. Do you have any professional goal or aspiration that you'd like to follow in the future? Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about what do I want to do um, more in the future. And, and at this stage of my career, I believe I want to contribute more to the community. And I started uh, small steps last year. I built up my blog. I'm not blogging as much as I wanted because, you know, we need to be thorough about the times. Otherwise, it's always tomorrow and tomorrow. And I, I have a lot of notes here and there. But consolidating everything into a blog post, it's a little bit harder than I, I anticipate. But I, I want to do that, to be more present on the community, sharing uh, and learning from it. And I always thought that sometimes a, a video will be better than the, than the blog, but I didn't start it yet. So probably in the future, I want to have a, a vlog, like they said, a video blog. Um, but then I always think about what I will bring to the game that is not already there. And nowadays you have so much content going around and with AI more so. So I don't want to be just another fish on the aquarium. I want to contribute to something that is, that is uh, useful. And that will take me a lot more time to produce than uh, everything that, uh, that I just do. But sometimes you just need to jump into the water and then you'll see it. So I'm, I'm in between thoughts now. The blog is already there. I'm adjusting myself to contribute more to, into it. And then uh, we'll see about the, the next thing. But I believe that the key here is learning. I agree with you. Sometimes you just need to take a risk and jump because starting with an MVP, you yeah. can call it like that, you can start with a blog post. And even if it looks small to you, you can then bring an add-on and yeah. make a video or any tutorial showing automations that you are doing inside your house, just like the example you were talking about. Yeah, the thing is, uh, uh, that's another thing. If I write a blog that is too small, I think, who will do, we'll read this. Yeah, we'll read this. I don't, so I, I start exaggerating and then I go into details. And when I end up, it's like, I don't know, 15 minute read <laughs> needed to. To, to go to the vlog, which is too much, but then, well, like you said, if you start small, uh, it will be useful, but you need to overcome this mentality switch. <laughs> and also related to what you were sharing earlier about the community, if you could leave one lasting impact or contribution to the field of software testing, what would you want it to be? Oof, that's a big, big question. Yeah, definitely. Legacy is always a, a thing that... Uh, when you start to have some age, you start thinking about it. It's what I'm going to leave behind <laughs> once I'm done. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I would like to be to be known by something that I bring to the table, not just me, but something I don't know, like uh, well, a sentence or an advice or. Uh, a framework or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure what, but something that is, um, well, I believe like everyone, something that will help the community in ways that will be spoken in the future. <laughs> but it's hard to do. Uh, it's hard to do. Um, I believe you will have throughout your life sper sporadic um successes that will have like your 15 minutes of fame will uh, will rise and you will have that and everyone is speaking about you and then they move to the next thing so it's hard to have um something that will endure uh, throughout time in testing in personal life i already have two kids so that's taken care of <laughs> one one boy one girl so the boy will take my name into the future uh, but in testing area um, if nothing else the message of continual learning and that it's possible to enter this testing world even without the technical knowledge if you want to uh, because nowadays if you use all of the assistance and everything and you have passion about it you will probably make it into testing. And testing is needed everywhere. Quality is everywhere. So that's the, the thing that will endure.
Before we wrap up the episode, it's going super fast. I have some special rapid fire questions that I want to share with you. And the first one is, if bugs were pets, what kind of bug would you want as a pet? <laughs> uh, if bug was pet, so uh, I don't know. I, I love cats and I believe a cat can be a kind of a, a bug sometimes because it's When you look at it, it seems like fluffy and all uh, cuddly and things like that. But then it um, ruins most of your <laughs> house. <laughs> so the curtains go away. Uh, uh, the, the sofas are not uh, what they used to be with the cats. and they, But they have their own personality, which is good. Sometimes we think it's a bug, but it's not. It's like a functionality disguised as a... Uh, non-reported functionality, so it's a new thing that you discover. Other times, it's it's a bug, uh, and cats are a little bit like that. Uh, so we don't know what to expect with them. So probably, yeah, I will maintain my my cat love <laughs> and go through it. And the second one is, if you could have dinner with anyone from the testing industry, would it be? Oh, that's um, that's a big one. You can share more than one. Feel free. I don't know. I, Obviously, it could be a dinner with two or three people. No, no worries there. Yeah. Um, well, I always uh, admire Lisa Crispin. So Lisa Crispin is someone that I already met in conferences. We didn't have dinner, of course, but we, we talked. <laughs> and it's someone that has made an impact and continued to, to do in the testing industry. So it's someone that I like to, to follow. I like her approach into testing. I like how... She's sharing everything. I like how she continued to focus, even though, uh, like me, she's been around for some time. So that's one of the, the persons I'm always come back to. But I'm more of a um, follower of stories, not of persons. So reading about those big companies and the changes that they do, uh, even though I know that probably I won't apply everything in my uh, current company, but I learn how they face those challenges so i love a good story about how did we did this i believe it's it's more more or less like that i follow a lot of persons nowadays the community is big so i have a lot of persons that i follow for different reasons one for because they are really good at automation one because it's really it really good on security testing or really good on exploratory testing so they have points of interest here and there And it's hard to follow everyone because they are all producing uh, content that is great and we need to follow. And they are rising stars that are just appearing with a new message, with a new way of doing things that are appearing. So if I need to choose only one, from top of my head, it will be uh, Lizzie Grispin. If I need to choose a lot, it will be like a marriage in Portugal and it will be like 100 persons there <laughs> dining with me. A wedding full of people waiting in line just to grab a snack or to get a drink. <laughs> the third question is, if you could swap jobs with another function for a day, would it be and why? For one day, um, I believe that um, I would like... Well, I will keep me a little bit on the testing side of things. I would like to do performance testing. Performance is another uh, field that um, sometimes we assume that, well, everyone is developing things that are performance. They are just in point, but that's not true. <laughs> Most of the time we're just developing, uh, looking at functionalities that we need to have, but then the performance is a little bit uh, on the side. Uh, security also, but I find security a little bit more boring. Performance for me, it's, it's the thing that has, um, it has a right dose of automation because you cannot do performance without automation. So uh, just for that, of course. Um, and then you need to understand exactly how the application is working, how it will perform, what kind of requests, what kind of interactions that you need to do, what kind of bottlenecks it may have just by looking at the architecture of it. And then you need to exercise those uh, bottleneck points in order to see if they're going to blow up or not, if they're going to resist or not. And then the outcomes of that are really helpful because you will know how much your application can endure and what you need to do if it reaches that breaking point. Will you need to increase the number of machines in order to have it handle that load? 
or you need to just create new services or you need to increase memory or disk. So all of those insights sometimes are really helpful, not only for testing, but also for the development team. So it's an area that is growing, uh, I believe. And it's, for me, really interesting uh, because if you want to have an application that will handle million of users, uh, you will need to be performant uh, or million of requests, depending on your back, uh, backend or frontend or API uh, or microservices. And all of that uh, is really interesting to me. And the part of automation is really crucial. If you could test any software from history, which would you choose? Oof, any software? Yeah. From the history. <laughs> One of my hobbies is also gaming. So I never did test games. So I'm always curious about what will it take for me to test games. It's really, uh, it will ally um, something that I like with something that I like also, but in a professional way. So I'm always curious about how should I test a, a game? Uh, and I did some experience in the past, but if I could test anything, I would test a game. Yeah, probably um, uh, Zelda. That's one of my go-to games. Something like that. Yeah, a game just to, to validate. I was going to ask your favorite game that was not on the script, but you already shared it. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, as you can see on, on, on Big Eye. So uh, all of the Mario's adventures, um, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it's one of them. The game that I spend most time <laughs> on until now but um, any first person shooter also just to have fun online with the boys you know and the girls it's always always fun and what's your top tip for aspiring software testers i would say like we 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 talked already uh, keep learning uh, about everything on the testing area keep asking questions keep being curious and one of the things i didn't talk about is also keep increasing your communication skills because a tester is um, one person that will need to communicate with a lot of persons, with a lot of fields, and you need to be able to communicate things in a positive way all of the time, even when it's negative, because you will need help from those persons, even though you have saying for the developer team, well, I find a bug, but probably you need to spin that around into something well, they see that is not just pointing something that is bad, but it's just finding an occurrence of something that is happening on the software that probably was not expected to. And we can turn that around and, and make a good experience and change that. So communication, invest in communication, skills and um, interaction, build your network of knowledge. Uh, because in the past, the tester is the guy that is present on the team that knows infrastructure because they need infrastructure to build the environments that knows the security guys because they need to have interactions for the, the, the testing. Uh, they know the PMs and the POs because the project owners or the project managers, because they in, interact with them um, uh, for all of the stories, all of the requirements. So it's like a, a pivot of, um, of the team that uh, has connections everywhere and can unblock or un help the team achieve some of the things that uh, if you are just closing it within your team, you cannot, you cannot achieve. So communication, learning, and curiosity, I believe, yeah. And the last thing that I want to know is, what's your go-to snack during long <laughs> testing sessions? <laughs> uh, my snack? Well, I don't, I don't do a long uh, testing session for a long time. But I will say any type of chocolate without coconut, because I don't like coconut. But at late night, uh, I believe chocolate. I'm a fan of Mars. I don't know if it's uh, widely everywhere, but that combination of chocolate caramel and that soft spot that has inside, it's like my favorite chocolate uh, that I have. Well, tied almost tied up with After Eight, because that combination of... Um, Mint with chocolate is always uh, nice too. So I have uh, all of those two. If I have it at home, it will hard. It will be hard to be safe <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Christian, for sharing more about yourself and your vision in the software testing industry. It's oh, been a pleasure. Likewise.
In our next episode, maybe you have already guessed and Sergio, the other awesome podcast host and QA therapist that you have here on the podcast. Until then, stay tuned for more insights and stories. We'll meet you in our next therapy session. Happy, Happy testing. testing. Bye.